Alright, so found my first leaks. There's one right here where the weather stripping wasn't tight enough, so that's now fixed. And there's one right here. It looks like it's coming from this area. And I believe that's a failure of one of the uh, little rubber pieces on one of the screws. So, right here, I don't see anything coming from above. It's bone dry. So it looks to be precisely right about there at the window. And then, of course, <clears throat> this is coming down because I don't have a rain guard around the top. So it's getting in the holes on the uh, top of the stack where the um, spark arrest is. So I'm going to have to make a little chimney head. So in that regard, everything fared well. But in the other regard, I have water on the inside, which is not pleasant. A couple tiny things to fix, and then that ought to lick it. The door sealed well. I mean, everything else fared well. Um, this little strip here got wet, but that's because I hadn't sealed it. I just placed it on. But the weather stripping did its job, and you can see where it had compression all the way through. So, good to go in that respect. It didn't even get in the crevices I have here. So, always promising. Obviously it's wet inside of the screen door. But the weather stripping where it was in compression did its job. So, success. Alright, time for some coffee. So this will be the first test of the washing machine. I uh, collected rainwater using a uh, empty vodka jug and then uh, strained it through some cheesecloth and then put in one cap full of bleach for every two gallons. That's actually heavier than the concentrate needs to be in order to make it drinking water by EPA to kill all the stuff inside of it if there is any. You only need to have five drips per gallon. So I equated I put in probably around 20, maybe 25 trips per gallon, because the cap full is quite a few CC. Um, so that ought to help, because I'm going to do the weights first. And uh, from there, I'm going to have to go back out. This is going to be salvaged for rinse water. This is four gallons in there already, which is probably more than I need. I think I only need to be But uh, yeah, inaugural run. So, I'll let you know. This is so much better than the other one that I had. Very, very cool. This cistern definitely turned into a complete laundry system. I still have at least 200 gallons in here. And this is just socks and underwear. I have more, but they're still clean. But uh, let's see if I have enough line out for um, shirts and pants.
Well, laundry is finally done. Looks like maybe I uh, let it go too long. All right, so here's the electrical update. This barely ran the AC. Um, it says 1,000 watt, 2,000 watt max. So I figured that when the AC was in cold start, maybe the compressor was asking for more than 2,000 watts. Which seems a little odd because 1850 is typically a 15 amp circuit, but I gave it the benefit of the doubt, figuring that maybe this 828 watt thing was the culprit, and it was just starved a little bit. If I turn this off, and then the AC died, and turned it back on before the electronics inside got involved with the overload and all that jazz then the AC would start and then everything would be fine. Well, that made me think this wasn't putting out enough. So here's what I did. I took the leads off of that and I took the leads and I put them directly to this battery. entire time I was trying to start and stop and everything, I had my eyes on the dial and the voltage, it never went below 12.1, and I had my eyes on here to see how many amps were being drawn and what that voltage was, and nothing dropped below 25, which means that there was enough current and voltage coming in to be able to support this while it tried to run that. And it did okay, but it ran kind of sluggish. From there, I, I took my 600 watt sunbeam that I've had since mm, 2013, 2014. And it's only 600 watt and it has a 40 watt ball bag. So that should be around, I don't know, let's give it benefit of the doubt with waste and everything else. Potentially 700 watts, which is really overstating. So 700 watts is below 828, and 700 watts is definitively below 2000, and definitely below 1000. So, these would not run microwave. When this was attached, the microwave ran for two seconds and then zipped. When this was attached, the microwave ran for around four seconds and zipped. So that's no good. So what I did, because this is a full sine wave, and that's what I wanted, because that's supposed to be good for these guys, you know. But, um, at the same time I bought this, I bought this guy, and this is a uh, non full wave. This is a uh, modified sine wave, and it used to make my microwave kind of buzz or hum. Either way, this is 800, 1600, and guess what it does? It runs this. It runs that, and it runs this. It'll run this and this at the same time. So, I already had what I needed. I just didn't want to take everything out of my van. But at this point, potentially sending this and this back might equate to somewhere. So I will recoup some of my funds. I will not recoup my time or my effort. And of course, that means the little fancy display is going to go away. So I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to buy one of these that I can then hook up to this. 
then I can see the voltages, etc. But, uh, I mean, come on. So, anyway, that's the update. I'm taking these things apart and I'm getting ready to pack them both. Alright, so here we go. This is um, where the leak is. And uh, it appears to have moved a little bit because it was here. But now it looks like it's coming from this. Boom. And that's right in the middle. So, like, I've got bitumen. But that's what I sealed it with primarily. So I'm debating on whether or not I want to have bitumen quote unquote fix it or whether I want to have silica seal it. Either way, that's a drift. So I'm going up the ladder in the dark at night time in the rain. Yay! Okay, so I'm sitting here looking at this. Well, standing on the ladder looking at this. Over here, I'm dry as a bone. Got a nice thick line of black stuff. Over here, I can see it starts to get a little bit thinner. I got a couple of pockets and then it's real thin. And then where it's real thin, I'm starting to see a little moisture get through. So why is um, tar allowing water through? Yeah. That's what I'm up against right now at this point. I mean, I guess it's not the rubber. And I can see the water flowing. You see that stuff going towards the right? So, I mean, it's stopping the water there. I'm just going to have to pump this thick. Oh, wow, you guys are really... Insects everywhere. <laughs> I'm in the woods. Looks as though the situation is resolved uh, from up top. I put some luck on it. 